Hey guys, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Hey, what do I got for you today? I've got chicken tiki masala. You're like, oh, okay, whatever, another Indian dish. No, this is the authentic Indian recipe. Why do I say that? Because I have my friend at work taste test this. I've got two Indian and I got one from Afghanistan. And all three of them said, wow, for not being a mix and being 100% fresh ingredients, this was amazing. In fact, they complimented of how well the chicken was made. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to make the authentic Middle Eastern chicken tiki. So guys, what is the ingredient or what are some of the ingredients to make the chicken tiki masala? Well, guess what? It's actually a two step process. The first step, you have to make the marinade. That's right. This chicken has to marinate for, you know, about 24 to 48 hours or longer. Now myself, I'm going to marinate it for about a day and a half. So what do I have? Well, of course, I've got some chicken breast over here. Now this package here happens to read at about three and a half pounds of chicken, which is perfect. Okay. Over here, I've got a bulb of some garlic that we're going to crush. I've got about three tablespoons of finely shredded ginger. I've got some cayenne pepper. Got some organic plain low fat yogurt. Now make sure that you're using plain yogurt, not vanilla or any type of flavored stuff because it might change the flavor. I got some ground cinnamon over here. Over here I've got some paprika that I put into a container trying to reorganize the spice cabinet. I've got the seven pepper blend. Let me tell you about this. This stuff is amazing. From oldtownspices.com. And these guys got a whole list of spices, including some of the hard to find stuff. Over here I've got some coriander powder, got some cumin seed over here, and I've got a lemon. Now these are the ingredients we're gonna combine all together to make the actual marinade. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to put together the actual marinade. Now remember, this is a two-step process. Marinade comes first, the sauce comes later. Stay tuned, you're watching Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Okay, so the first thing we do is we're gonna dump the yogurt into the Marinade Express mixer. Now, if you don't have one of these, perfectly fine to put all the ingredients into a mixing bowl, mix it all up, and then go ahead and put it into a Ziploc bag. Okay, so next we're gonna start combining all the ingredients, but we're gonna use this empty yogurt container because we're gonna mix it all up before we put it into the Marinade Express. But first we're gonna start off with about two tablespoons of paprika here. Dump that into the container. Next, we're gonna start off with some ground coriander. This is about two tablespoons here of ground coriander. We're gonna dump that in there. Uh, this one here is some cayenne pepper. This one here is about two tablespoons of some cayenne pepper. We're gonna, or two teaspoons, my apologies. We're gonna dump that in there. Uh, we got some of that seven pepper blend. This is about one tablespoon of the one, the seven pepper blend. We got about a half a tablespoon of the cumin seeds. We're gonna dump that into the mix. And over here, this is some cinnamon. This is about a half a tablespoon of some cinnamon. We're gonna put all that together, and then we're gonna put in the crushed ginger, and then I'm gonna crush this whole head of garlic. And we're gonna combine it all together into here. We're gonna mix it all up, and then we're gonna add it into the Marinade Express. Stay tuned. Now, all the spices have been mixed up really good in, into this yogurt bowl here. And now we're gonna add about a shot glass of the lemon juice. I pressed it using my juice presser, and we're gonna add that lemon juice over here. And then I'm gonna stir it up, but I'm gonna put the lid back on so that I can mix it up really, really well. And then we're gonna get that over here into the marinade, which I've already added the ginger to. After mixing the lemon juice in the yogurt container with the other spices, this is what it looks like. And that is almost the color that you see in the chicken tiki masala. Isn't that amazing? So now we're gonna go ahead and empty this container using a spatula into the marinade. 
Next, we're gonna go ahead and cut up the chicken. Now I want to show you guys two different ways you can cut your chicken. The one on the left here is a little bit thicker. And the reason why I did that one is some people like to put their chicken on skewers after it's been marinated. So go ahead and cut it pretty thick, enough thickness so that you can put them on a skewer when you're done marinating them and then you can barbecue it that way. But I am going to cut them up smaller. Why is that? Because I want the aroma and the flavor to absorb into the chicken because I'm actually going to make this into a dish that gets layered onto some rice. So you want the highlight not only to be the chicken, but to be the sauce. So you decide if you want the chicken for skewers or the chicken for an actual creamy sauce over rice. That's up to you to decide. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish dicing up the chicken to the smallness, and then I'm going to put it into the marinade mixing dish over here. Now that the chicken's all diced up and into the marinade express container, it's time to go ahead and turn on the machine to vacuum this. Now remember, if you don't have one of these machines, it's perfectly fine to put in a Ziploc bag, squeezing out as much air as possible. Well, let's go ahead and turn this thing on. It gets pretty loud here. And we're going to wait for this little meter here to become green. Now watch it, see how it's moving? It's still in the red, and it's going to go to yellow, and then it's going to go to green. When it's green, that's when we know the vacuum is complete. Now that the vacuum is complete, it's time to turn on the machine to tumble the meat. Well, over here, we're going to go ahead and set this baby to 90 minutes. Now 90 minutes is the maximum it will allow us to do. So there it is. Now we're going to go ahead and hit the rotate over here and you'll see that it starts to rotate the chicken. And it will keep doing that for 90 minutes. Now remember, this is under a vacuum and it's also going to marinate. And that's how you get the tender chicken. That's what my friends at work were saying. Wow. How did you make this chicken taste so amazing? Well, this is the secret right here. The Marinade Express. Okay, so guys, that's how we do part one of the two-step process on the chicken tikka masala. Remember, part one is the marinade, and that's what we just got done doing. Let that stuff marinate for about 24 hours. The longer, the better. The more tender that yogurt and the lemon juice, all the spices are gonna get into that meat and make that chicken amazing, okay? So again, I marinate mine for about a day and a half, give or take, but I also have that marinade express. And understand, a lot of you don't because it costs a lot of money. So go ahead and put that into a Ziploc bag, get as much air out as possible, massage the crap out of it every time you go into the refrigerator, and you too will have some amazing tender chicken. Stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you part two, and that is after it's done marinating, we're gonna cook up the chicken, but we're also gonna make the sauce and bring it all together. Remember, the two-part series, you're watching part one of the chicken tiki masala, with Crazy Dave. You're watching Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Crazy Dave's Kitchen. Now this is part two of the chicken tikka masala. Part one was the marinade. And it's been marinating about a day and a half, for almost two days. So we're gonna cook that up. But right now, we're gonna work on part two and that's the sauce. Stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you how to make the sauce, all the ingredients, and then we're gonna put it all together to make a fabulous Indian chicken dish. tiki masala. Authentic. So guys, what's the ingredients on the sauce? Well, we got over here a whole head of garlic that I decided to kind of separate, and we went ahead and peeled the garlic. I've got three serrano peppers that we're going to de-seed. I've got a stick of butter. We're not going to use all of it, but most of it. I've got a can of diced tomatoes. Now, if you want to use whole tomatoes, you can. I've got a little bit of that Graham Masala from OldTownSpices.com. A can of tomato paste. A bottle or a 
container of heavy whipping cream, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, some smoked paprika, and then I've got about two inches of, actually this is about three inches of some shredded uh, ginger. Now I'm gonna take the garlic, crush it up, mix it in with this ginger here, and then I'm gonna smash it down as much as possible. Well stay tuned, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so the garlic and ginger have been mashed together, and over here I de-seeded and I chopped up fine the serrano peppers. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add olive oil to the pot. Okay, so I'm using a pretty good sized pot here because I plan on making a lot of sauce. But inside the pot, I added, you know, about two to three tablespoons, give or take, of olive oil. And we're gonna bring that to a medium heat. Next, I added four tablespoons of butter. That's about a half a stick of butter. We're gonna keep mixing the butter and the olive oil until it's completely melted over here. Next, we're gonna add the ginger paste and the serrano peppers into the pot. After adding to the pot, give it a really super good stir and get it nice and coated with the oil and the butter. And let that cook for a little bit. After sauteing this mixture for a couple of minutes, it starts to look a little brown on the edges. That's perfect. Now, if you want to cook a little bit longer for a minute or two, that's fine as well. But when ready, we're going to add one can of tomato paste to it. After we added the can of tomato paste, we're just going to slightly stir this up a little bit and mix it up really good. After we're done mixing the tomato paste, we're going to let it sit here like this for about three minutes until the tomato paste darkens in color. Now that the tomato paste has darkened in color and looks really good, we're going to go ahead and add one tablespoon of Grand Masala and one tablespoon of paprika. And we're going to mix it up really, really well. Next, we're going to add one and a half cup of water. Now pour it in slowly because that pan is really hot. And give that a really good mix. After we mixed the sauce, we're now going to add the whole can of diced tomatoes. And give that a really super good stir. Mix it up really, really well. After mixing the diced tomatoes, we're going to leave it on high and we're going to bring this mixture to a high or to a boil. Now once this mixture is at a boil, then we're going to reduce it to a simmer. Now see over there where it starts to bubble? Watch for that, okay? Because you don't want it to bubble too much, it'll start splattering everywhere. So what do you do? Grab your wooden spoon and just keep stirring this until it starts to boil. Again, do not let it bubble up as it will make one heck of a mess in your kitchen. After the mixture has been brought to a boil, we're going to go ahead and lower it down to a simmer. Now we're going to put a lid on it. Why? Because we don't want that to happen. That is splatters from it over boiling. So we want to put on sim or simmer and we're going to put a lid on it so that it will help to guard against the splattering. And we're going to let this simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. So guys, this is what you might want to call intermission. Because you got to wait 30 minutes for the sauce to kind of thicken up. But now, this is the perfect time to fire up your Traeger, your Weber, your charcoal grill, your propane grill, whatever you want to grill on. Because now, it's time to cook that chicken. But I recommend one of two things. Do not put it directly on the grate because it will just fall right through. So if you have those, like the frog mats or a grilling mat, use that. If not, then lay it down in like a baking dish. Kind of simmer that in there, cook it up, okay? Or even lay down some aluminum foil. But cook that chicken nice and tender in that grill. Now if you remember earlier in part one, I also told you that 
if you don't want to dice them up, you can cut them up kind of thick so you can skewer them. Now that's perfect. Go ahead and barbecue that. But go ahead and cook up your chicken. Save the sauce though. Do not throw that marinade away because we're going to use that. So only cook up that chicken. Separate it from the marinade sauce because remember that's still raw chicken. You want to keep that separate for right now. But we might use that for the sauce. Sometimes I use it. Sometimes I don't depending on what the sauce looks like or the taste. Sometimes I want it a little bit more flavor to it. So that's for you to decide and we'll kind of look at that together in one moment. You're watching Crazy Days Kitchen. Now go cook your chicken and come right back. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the chicken from the Marinade Express by opening this little vacuum seal. That is the vacuum release on that chicken. We're going to transfer the chicken over here to this baking dish and then we're going to put it into the Traeger. So here's the chicken in the baking dish getting ready to go into the Traeger. I'm going to set this at you know 225 or so and just so it kind of slow cooks, pick up a little bit of the smoky flavor. Now over here in the Marinade Express I have that leftover marinade sauce and I'm going to take this marinade sauce and now we're going to add it to the sauce mix that has been simmering for 30 minutes. Now we added that marinade sauce to this pot here and we're going to let this simmer the entire time on really low that the chicken is on the grill. And today guys we're going to use mommy's baby Traeger. Why? We got to make sure this baby is going to work because we're getting ready to go to the river. So why not test it out with the new Pelico PID controller installed here. And right now that chicken is in here and we're just going to let this baby start up. And what's really cool about the Pelico PID is you don't even have to start it with the lid open. You just basically turn this baby on, set your temperature and walk away. Okay guys, so the chicken has been in the trigger for a little bit of time here and we're going to check the thermometer on it, it's about 160 degrees. So now we're going to go ahead and take this off and we're going to add it into the sauce mixture so that way there we can let it simmer a little bit longer and finish the dish. Now that the chicken is done, we're going to take this sauce and we're going to put it into a blender and puree it. Then we're going to return it back to the pot. Now we removed the chicken from the Traeger and poured that into this mixture. And we're going to stir it up really good. But we're leaving the stove on simmer. Now we're going to go ahead and add about a half of this one quart container of heavy cream into the pot. We're going to give it a good stir and let it simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then your chicken should be done and ready to serve. So this is the time that you probably want to most likely start making your rice. And just give this a really good stir. And there you go. You'll have your chicken tikka masala. Well, thanks for watching Crazy Days Kitchen. Enjoy.